Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision videos. Now guys, I put out a poll for those of you in year 10 and year 11 asking what is the most challenging aspect of English GCSEs that you'd like to see more revision videos on. And the overwhelming majority of you guys voted that Macbeth was the most difficult aspect of your English GCSEs. So guys, I had a think and I thought that when I consider context when I consider the play's message, the key characters of Macbeth, you really can drill it down to five essential points that if you literally take the time to understand these five aspects, both related to the play's main characters, context and themes, if you understand this, then you literally will know everything that you need to know for Macbeth. And if you use these points, you can literally apply it to any exam question, okay? So guys, what I'm gonna do, as you can see behind me, is go over the five most essential aspects when it comes to Macbeth that you need to know. Once you understand these aspects, you literally understand the play and the play's message. And of course, also I'll mention how these relate to past questions. All the past paper questions that have come up from 2017 all the way to the 2024 exams, okay? Now guys, before I get into it, for those of you who want to achieve grades seven, eight, and nine in your language exams, okay, this is language paper one and paper two exams, guys, I'll be resuming my weekly GCSE English language paper one and paper two masterclasses from the 15th of September, okay, from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. I'll be going over both papers. So for those of you that want to do really well in your upcoming October mocks, and of course, for those of you that are gonna be resitting, make sure you sign up. So guys, let's get to it. The top five things, once you understand them for Macbeth, you are absolutely covered for this play. The first and honestly central theme that goes with any of the characters that you'd be expected to talk about and any of the themes is the notion of ambition. Guys, remember that ambition is the central theme that drives the play's message, but also it's the central theme that triggers the series of tragic events that leads Macbeth to go from a hero to a tragic fallen person, okay? So remember that, and I've literally highlighted ambition, ambition, ambition. This is the play's central theme. You can literally talk about it with any of the key characters, but also you can also talk about it in combination with the themes in case you're asked to discuss any of the themes, okay? Remember that. Firstly, the idea of ambition, this was the original sin that both Macbeth and Lady Macbeth are guilty of committing, okay? Remember that this play was written in Jacobean society whereby there was a very rigid hierarchy, okay? It was called the great chain of being. And it's not like today's society whereby, you know, you can be born in one position, you work really hard, you're ambitious, and then you end up being richer, more powerful, and so on, and it's rewarded by society. Jacobean society, this idea of having ambition and moving through your social rank in the great chain of being was actually a very frightening and destabilizing force. And actually Shakespeare wrote this to highlight to all the noblemen in King James's court that actually it's wrong to follow ambition because this is going to destabilize society. Look at what Macbeth did and look at the terrible fate that he faced as a result of following ambition. And guys, remember that ambition, which is seen as a very destructive force, this was actually very important and this was something that Shakespeare really highlighted because remember that Shakespeare lived through two monarchs, okay? Number one, the first monarch who lived and died in his period was obviously Queen Elizabeth I. She had no heirs, okay? And so royal society and kind of the royal court was really frightened of uh, ambitious noblemen wanting to be her successors, wanting to cause any type of war in order to uh, take over once she died, okay? And of course, also remember that King James this was King James VI of Scotland and the first of England. He was a new king when Macbeth was first staged, okay? Remember that he was coming from Scotland. He was seen as a foreign king. There were some noblemen who were sitting in the court who were thinking, actually, I don't think this guy deserves to be king. And they were potentially developing ambitious schemes to overthrow him. This play was also uh, a warning to them not to think about it. Otherwise, they would destabilize society, much like Macbeth destabilized Scottish society, okay? So remember that, obviously, this is also a time when Guy Fawkes tried to blow up the Houses of Parliament and kill the king. So ambition is a central theme. And once you take the time to understand this, you can literally answer any question on Macbeth. That's the first main point. Number two, of course, when it comes to Macbeth and what you need to know, 
you of course need to be able to talk about Macbeth for any question, okay? So Macbeth's character is very important. And of course, he's the central figure. The play is also named after him, okay? So remember, when you're talking about him, make sure you highlight and use these keywords. Mention that he's the play's tragic hero. Remember that a tragic hero is simply somebody, a main character in a play that is born of a high status. Macbeth was a thane. However, they have something, a flaw within them. In his case, it was ambition that leads them to make a series of mistakes and then it leads to their downfall, okay? Make sure when you're talking about Macbeth, he's the play's tragic hero. Highlight that, use that language. And of course, also mention the fact that, and this ties really nicely into AO3 context, that his ambition is what caused him to not only become a fallen tragic hero, but he also disrupted the great chain of being, something that Jacobean society was very frightened of. And of course, ambition, leads him to develop hubris, him thinking that he's indestructible. Equally, his reliance and his belief in the supernatural, the witches, the prophecies that they tell him, this also leads to him developing hubris and thinking that he is indestructible. Use these terms. Another aspect, of course, is also always mention that Macbeth is the play's cautionary figure. Now, when it comes to the past questions, you definitely want to be able to write about Macbeth because between 2017 and 2020 or 2024, right, out of the eight past paper exams, six out of the eight questions were focused around Macbeth, okay? So you want to be able to talk about Macbeth because majority of past paper questions actually had Macbeth as one of the focal characters that you have to talk about, okay? So make sure, the second thing, if you forget everything, make sure you need to be able to talk about Macbeth. Mention is a tragic hero, mention he has hubris and he's a cautionary figure. Of course, the second character you need to be able to talk about, and this is point number three, for Macbeth is Lady Macbeth. Incidentally, of course, the 2024 exam was on Lady Macbeth's character, okay? So, when it comes to Lady Macbeth, make sure you mention that she's seen as the play's fourth witch. This is really good Jacobean context as well, okay? Because it was unnatural for an Elizabethan woman and also a Jacobean woman to be ambitious, to scheme, to plot, right? So she didn't want to, she didn't really care about having children like the typical Elizabethan woman. She was very commanding of her husband and this was seen as very unnatural, okay? So that's why she was called the fourth witch. And however, what you also want to highlight is she's arguably the main character who changes the most out of all of the characters, okay? Because by act five, scene one, she actually experiences some kind of revelation that makes her realize actually all of this ambition and the fact that I corrupted my husband, he, um, you know, engaged in all of these killings, disrupted the great chain of being. This leads her to become so guilty that she has the supernatural hallucination of seeing spots of blood on her hands. And this, this guilt, which she's unable to li live with, leads for her to turn it against herself and commit suicide, which is obviously, you can argue, God's divine punishment against her, okay? So when you're talking about Lady Macbeth, make sure you mention that she manipulates reality and appearances, okay? So she always says, you know, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. And of course, she has a significant role in disrupting the great chain of being by triggering Macbeth to kill the king. And remember that when it comes to the past paper questions, between 2017 and 2024, Lady Macbeth is mentioned in three out of the eight questions. So also the reason why you want to be able to write about her is because it's a really nice, you know, it's an important gamble that you're making, okay? So if you um, literally are not able to remember any of the other characters, Macbeth and Lady Macbeth are literally your go-to, okay? So remember that Macbeth literally, six out of the eight past paper questions were based on him and Lady Macbeth, three out of the eight past paper questions, including the 2024 exam, okay? So that's the third major thing to remember for Macbeth. Number four is, of course, the witches and the theme of the supernatural, okay? So when it comes to the witches, remember that the play deliberately starts off with them, okay? When they say fair is foul, foul is fair, and so on. Shakespeare does this to highlight them as, and use this in your essay, agents of chaos, okay? So the witches and any supernatural force is portrayed as an agent of chaos. Hence why Macbeth became a tragic hero because he trusted these agents of chaos who corrupted him and led him to develop hubris, okay? Use that language in your Macbeth essays. Equally, of course, remember that the witches, they reverse the natural order, they turn everything topsy-turvy. And remember, when you're also mentioning any um, on any essay on the supernatural, okay, make sure you remember that there's also supernatural hallucinations that are used to highlight guilt, okay? Remember, you've got Macbeth's ambition, which is highlighted through him um, hallucinating and seeing the floating dagger. Also, Macbeth 
has Banquo murdered and then he sees his ghost. Okay, so these two hallucinations, um, these supernatural hallucinations highlight his guilt. But of course, also Lady Macbeth's hallucination where she sees the spots of blood on her hands. And equally, the three apparitions that are shown to Macbeth by the witches. Okay, so you've got the bloody baby who highlights, you know, um, Malcolm. You've got the, um, the uh, figure of the armoured head who says, beware Macduff. And of course, also the young king who has a crown in his hand. And he mentions um, Macbeth should not be vanquished until great Burnham, uh, Burnham Wood comes to High Dunstan Hill. Okay, so these are all supernatural images. And these obviously are used by Shakespeare to highlight the fault in following supernatural figures, okay? Because they reverse the natural order. And of course, remember that King James himself was really obsessed, he was really paranoid. He thought, you know, witches or kind of these women would take his power. And he even wrote about it in his book, Demonology. And the final thing is to mention, if you're writing about the witches or the supernatural figures within the play, they never lie, but they do speak in equivocations and riddles. And when it comes to past paper questions, one out of the eight past paper questions were to do with the supernatural uh, figures. Okay, so remember that one of the past paper questions talked about Macbeth and Banquo's attitudes towards the supernatural. Okay, that's why it's a good idea to practice and to know about the witches and to be able to write about the supernatural. And finally, number five, I'm going to leave you guys with key quotes to remember if you forget everything. When it comes to Macbeth, make sure you remember these quotes and these relate to Macbeth, Lady Macbeth and the witches. The first quotation is obviously when Macbeth is talking about the supernatural soliciting. And the second quote is to do with him highlighting his vaulting ambition, okay? Of course, this ties into the points that I've talked about with Macbeth's character. Of course, the next set of quotations are to do with Lady Macbeth. Of course, her famous on Sex Me Here, which shows her as the fourth witch and the complete transformation of her character. As I mentioned, she's arguably the main character who changes and transforms the most. By Act 5, Scene 1, she sees out damn spot this hallucination of her ha on her hand before she commits suicide. And the final quotation to do with the witches or supernatural is when they say, Hail Macbeth, ellipsis, and then they tell Banquo to create a division between the two, thou shalt get kings, though thou be none, okay? So that's really it when it comes to Macbeth and the five things to know if you forget everything, especially going into this year, as long as you take the time to understand the central world of ambition, Macbeth, the points that you can talk about when it comes to Macbeth's character, Lady Macbeth, the witches and the supernatural. And of course, if you also memorize these quotations, you'll be absolutely fine when it comes to Macbeth. And as I mentioned before, guys, don't forget to sign up for my GCSE Language Report and Paper 2 Masterclasses, which take place every Sunday from 5 to 6 p.m. we'll be going over how to pass and how to get grade 7 to 9 in these two papers. Thank you so much guys for listening.